Hello there, everybody. Today we are doing a reading, or I guess I should say I'm doing a reading for Marie, who has wrote in and had an internet reading before, maybe two. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, very sweet, kind energy. Here is Marie, and so I'm just clearing the cards for her. For those of you who don't know, I do offer these readings at the very low, low, low price of $6 each. I also have private readings, which are a little bit more expensive. Those are for one question or two question readings. If you want the pre-recorded version, or if you would like to have a, a uh, live reading with me, then I do offer 30 minute, 45 minute, and 60 minute live readings. You can find all the information about those on my website. I also offer an addiction relief service for those of you who are wanting to kick a bad habit and just want a little extra boost as you do that. And then I have um, services in the local area only, local area being Golden, Colorado, or within a reasonable two-hour driving distance. I do offer psychic parties to help facilitate you and your guests in exploring your own psychic abilities. And I also offer psychic parties where I just read for you and your guests. And then I also clear homes. So if you're looking to sell a home and it's been on the market just a little too long, you might want to get rid of some of that stagnant energy. I'm the person to call in for that. Also, if you're having problems with negative entities or energies in your home, I'm also the girl to call for that. Go ahead and come in and clean that right up for you. <laughs> and those two also are within a two hour driving distance from Golden, Colorado. All of that stuff is on my website. All you have to do is check it out. Let's get started with our reading for Marie, since we now have the cards cleared. And before I put down her cards, I actually want to remember to silence my cell phone. Wouldn't that be smart? Okay. Marie wants to know if Spirit has any messages for her. I just had a card drop. With this deck, I normally don't get cards that drop. I do have a deck that's a little bit big in my hands and cards drop there sometimes, but that's unusual for this deck. A card drop for me, too, is a sign that this is um, an emphatic message from Spirit with that card. So we're going to save that. I'll flip it over in a minute, and that'll be our first card for your reading, Miss Marie. Does Spirit have any messages for you? Your first card is the Two of Stones. By the way, I am using the Wildwood Tarot deck. This is the deck I've used for my pro readings for a very long time. I'm starting to incorporate some other decks now. And I'm also being told to go ahead and use my Gilded Reverie Lenormand, which normally I don't use those. I don't use the Lenormand in my pro readings, but if Spirit says, use them. <laughs> Who on earth am I to say, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so we're going to use these as well. I'm just going to lay out three to start with <clears throat> underneath the tarot that we've already got going. And we'll see how these play in. I'm not sure if these are going to be um, like confirmation or if these are going to be explanation or what these are going to be. When Spirit sends me out on something new, it's all just a big discovery. So let's see what we've got here. Okay, now Lenormand are not my specialty, so it might take me a little longer to figure those out than it does the tarot's, but we'll see what happens. Let me just read off the cards to you, Ms. Marie. We're going to start with your tarot's, what you got in order left to right. Two of stones came up first. That was the one that actually fell out, so that's going to have a special significance. Then we've got um, five out of the Major Arcana. This is called the Ancestor in this deck, and it came in reversed. Actually, the rest of your tarot cards came in reversed. Please don't worry about that. <laughs> reversed does not necessarily mean bad whenever I'm reading. Maybe for other people it does, but for me it does not. In fact, some cards are much more kind to us reversed than they are right side up. So um, let's move on. So we've got two of stones upright. We've got the ancestor in reverse. We've got the six of arrows in reverse. We've got the two of vessels in reverse. And we have the four of bows in reverse. Interesting, interesting cards. All right, so let's look at Lenormand, too, and just run through these really quickly. First, we've got 20, which is the garden. Then we've got 14, which is the fox. 
and 19, which is the Tower. I'll get to the Lenormans later on, but let's start with the Tarot. So, ho, ho, ho. The first thing that we have, Two of Stones, does talk about challenge. It talks about balancing things out. Um, this can talk about balancing finances many times, although I don't see a lot more of stones cards here in this spread so this probably has more to do with some other kind of energy that you're working on balancing out right now Ms. Marie so this can be that maybe your schedule is really tight and you're having to really work to squeeze everything in or to get everything accomplished you want to get accomplished um, when we've got the two of stones this says that you are doing that and people from the outside are thinking wow how is she pulling that off she's handling that so gracefully um, but you may be feeling stressed about this. So there's some way that you're juggling energy. Now this could also be, like I said, this could also be finances. This could be, you know, juggling your money from one account to the other to make sure that you've got everything covered that needs to be covered in this place. And then going back and trying to cover what you pulled here to there. <laughs> I've seen this card come up and indicate stuff like that too. Um, the way this card shows up, it does show that you're successful at balancing whatever it is you're balancing. Um, but you may be experiencing some stress <laughs> as you're doing this. Uh, and Spirit is saying, needless to say, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing as I said that way. I chuckled a little bit. Um, so that's the first thing that we have coming up here. Now, it looks to me like part of the reason why you're working so hard just to keep your balance has to do with a commitment that is not there. Now... I don't have a lot of context for you, Marie, so I'm going to tell you a couple of ways that this card could play out as examples. Uh, you're going to have to kind of figure out where this fits in your life because I don't have the actual context to go, oh yeah, that makes total sense, that must be here. So basically when we've got the ancestor in reverse, this is supposed to be like the similar card to the Hierophant in a traditional deck, however... Um, I see this card a little bit differently than a typical Hierophant card. This card talks about um, religious practices that date back pre-Christian times. Okay, um, So where you might have the Pope on a regular Hierophant for the ancestor, um, you don't have the Pope. In fact, I'll just show you this card. It came out reversed, but I'm going to show you right side up. This is who we have as the ancestor. Now, there's a lot of significance in this card. First of all, with all the snow on the ground, there's a lot of unknown going on, a lot of things that are um, below the surface that we can't actually see. Um, the other things that we have going on when you have an ancestor beating a drum, a ceremonial drum even because it's painted, that's a call. Generally, that's seen as a call to action, a call to make a decision, a call forward, a call to some kind of ceremony possibly even. And in ceremonies, what's happening? We're making decisions. We're making decisions to move forward in some way or another. In a wedding ceremony, we're deciding to be joined up with somebody for the rest of our lives. You know, in a first communion ceremony, we're deciding that we are um, willing to commune with the sacred. Um, when we have, uh, what is that called? In the Catholic Church, it's called confirmation. Whenever you receive the Holy Spirit, you know, that's a decision to move forward and to um, honor any influence that the Holy Spirit would bring into your life or into your decisions, okay? And that's not exactly how Catholic Catechism would teach it. So you're getting the total of Mr. Paraphrase here. But any ceremony you're going to have is somebody's making a decision to move forward. So even these ceremonies that are older than the Catholic Church still, um, there's a certain amount of decision making in that and commitment and step forward. So when we've got the ancestors showing up in reverse, to me, I feel like in this situation, because the snow is now on top of the card, I feel like there is a situation that has a lot of unknown factors or mystery around it. I also feel like this is talking about a bond or a commitment that either has been considered and um, let go. Like maybe 
uh, you thought about a bond to now a bond can be a marriage it can be an employment um, there's a lot of different ways that bonds can show up a commitment a bond or a commitment this can be signing a lease on a house even that's a huge bond you're bonded to that house <laughs> um, so when we've got this coming up in reverse this is telling me that this is there's a bond or a commitment that you have considered that either um, you've considered it and you've decided not to go forward with it or it's a bond that you considered and you stepped into this bond or commitment and now that has sort of come off the tracks and that that bond or commitment is being dismantled so this could be easily this could be like a divorce totally fits that um, but this could also be an employee employer relationship that's coming apart or if you are a contractor this could be um, you know a, a vendor a contract with a vendor or a contract with somebody that you're a vendor for so there's some kind of bond or commitment that either you've considered and you're not moving forward with it or you um, have actually entered into and now you're coming out of that and so I feel like because you know we had that challenge of balance starting at first that has to do with this bond or commitment that you're not moving into or that you're moving out of okay and <laughs> part of that balance and challenge is that you're thinking about well what would it be like if I move back into that or what would it be like if I reconsider that bond or commitment what would it be like if I if I reconsider and I decide yeah actually I would like to go forward with that or what would happen if I reconsider that that loosening of that bond or commitment what if I want to go back into that and I think that you know that's something that is heavy on your mind there's a little bit of inner turmoil within you about some kind of bond or commitment is really what the first three cards are telling me I think probably we'll have an assessment of a situation which hopefully will bring you more clarity and then probably with the Lenormand we're probably looking at advice here but um, let's see what else we have coming out here so with that fourth card coming up we have the two of vessels in reverse this is telling me that even though you're considering going back to that bond or commitment you're not so keen on the idea this doesn't necessarily seem like it's going to be fun or it has any attraction I think that if you're thinking about going back to this bond or commitment it will have more to do with um, feelings of responsibility or feelings of well I just don't know what else to do I don't know where else to go or what else to do um, if I'm not doing that okay so I don't see this as um, running back to that happily joyfully celebrating that <laughs> you would get back into that and honestly I do see this as you know just thought you have all this confusion about you know do you want to keep the situation the way it is where you're not moving forward with this bond or commitment or where you're getting out of this bond or commitment whatever your case is or do you want to go back to it even though the thought doesn't exactly flip your triggers or make you happy okay and ultimately it looks to me like there is something coming up here about being away from home whatever home is for you you know if this is an employment situation this could very well be that you've been at this employer for so long this place feels like home but I think even if it does feel like home I think you feel happy to get away from it and if this is a relationship situation with a significant other or a partner in the home I really feel like um, the emotions that you have when you step away from this or when you imagine yourself stepping out of this are happiness at least in the long term I think they're happiness of course uh, any kind of big change like this is always an adjustment so there's there is a time lag on the happiness here <laughs> there is definitely a time lag on the happiness here La -da 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 -da. what else can I glean from this for you 
there's just this whole thing is just very um, just smacks of confusion around this commitment and I don't think that you're thinking about going back to this commitment because you want to okay and I've said all that before so let's move on I want to look at the Lenormand here And I am taking these as more advice than just what the situation is for you. So I'm actually starting with the middle card here. And the middle card is the fox. The fox is something that's a little bit lighter. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe not always truthful, um, but it's sort of a, a joking type energy or a jokester type energy sort of you know, not taking anything too seriously. And I really think that our advice here for you is, you know, don't take things so seriously. Go ahead and get a distance, you know, get some detachment around this whole idea of whether to be com in this commitment or not. And look at it from a more detached view. And that will help you to move forward with more clarity if you can look at it in a more detached way and, and try to get your, your own emotions and your own triggers sort of out of the way here. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's look at the relationship between these cards too. It looks to me, Miss Marie, like you getting out in public, networking, meeting other people, is going to help you come up with some good ideas and some good insights with the situation and good ways to look at this for clarity um, you know to really be able to sort and sift through what's going on here and and where do I want to go with this situation so just talking to other people is going to help you a lot some of that talking is going to be venting but some of that is going to be picking up new insights and then this last card the tower talks about institutions this can be something like jails hospitals schools government buildings of any kind um, and so big business even and so let's see what we have going on here this to me is talking about There's a few ways I could go with this. I'm just feeling for what feels like the actual path that we've got here. Okay, so basically what this is saying is, you know, take lightly any word that comes from big business or from any institutions. Take them a little bit lightly. Um, don't get yourself all Twitter pated or stressed out about them. And find information do your own research you know go online and look for research when somebody tells you something about a big business or about an institution you know don't just accept that as truth just because somebody that you respect said it also go and look for information Google information if this has to do with where you work this is saying that, you know, by networking, by going out in public, by meeting other people, you're going to find out more information about this place that you work that's going to help you to make your decision about what you want to do here. Do you want to stay? Do you want to go? You know, if they offered you a promotion, do you want to take that promotion? Whatever this commitment is that you've been considering, that... I think that you can find information, you can find clarity, you can find help in very public places. Now, online is a very public place. Networking is a very public place, even when you do it face to face. Don't take things too seriously. You know, do your research, do your due diligence. If you're thinking about starting your own big business, you know, do your own due diligence. Don't take things too seriously, as in, don't let things stress you out. Just find out the information. Like if you're hearing some kind of rumor gossips coming at you about stuff that has you all stressed out, well, the best way to handle that is find out the real information. You know, talk to the horse. Go to the horse's mouth. Find out the real deal. What's really going to be expected of you? What's really going on? Okay? And if this is something about the business that you're working with, if there's rumors or whatever around that, 
also don't take that very seriously. If there's if people are trying to tell you, you know, if you take this thing to court, it's going to end in such and such a way, don't take that very seriously. Do your research if you need to get a lawyer to help you understand the situation, do that. But do your research, do your due diligence here. Whatever the situation is for you. Okay? Whatever this is, it definitely feels like it has some kind of legal ramifications to me. So you may be dealing, this institution may be like a courthouse or something like that. But definitely a lot of the information that you need is public domain. It's right out there on the internet. Um, you can meet people who know things who can help you with this. And, you know, don't get stressed. That's the, the key thing here is don't get stressed, even though you know, you're in this challenging situation. You're not sure what to do about this commitment. Maybe you're feeling pressured legally to enter into this commitment and you're just like, ah, I don't really want to do that. Don't think I do. But I like what's being offered legally if I do. So get the big picture. Basically, the advice here is get the big picture. Don't trust anybody's word for what they're telling you to be absolute truth just because they kind of seem like they might know. <laughs> Find out from an expert. Okay, so that is your advice there. I hope that makes sense to you, Ms. Marie. If I had context, I could tell you more specifically, but um, my deal with Sacred Spirit has always been that I don't have to know every little terrible, dirty laundry detail to be able to pass along a message. As long as I can pass along the information so that you know what's going on, then I have done my job. So... Let me know if that resonates for you and if that makes sense to you, I would appreciate it. And thank you so much for allowing me to read for you. Everyone else, have a fantastic, wonderful day, weekend, week, whatever it is, whenever you watch this. And peace out. <laughs>